I think it's fair to say we've done some pretty wacky things to the Poppy Playtime games when we looked at them before. But believe it or not, that was all while playing them mostly the intended way. <laughs> well, with three chapters out now, I figure it's time to take the training wheels off and do something a little bit fancier. Completing chapter one of the game with my ability to turn the camera entirely removed. Well, little did I know that this would be the most brutal test of my skills yet. With me needing to pull out every trick, glitch, and bizarre piece of physics jank in the book, in order to finally crab walk my way to the end credits. Please, 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 please. This is Poppy Playtime Chapter 1, with no neck. That couldn't have been closer. My... God. So this is Poppy Playtime, and we're going to be playing it Necklace. Okay, let's go. Let's start the challenge. So, Necklace is basically no camera movement. We cannot move our head, we cannot use our mouse, we cannot use the right analog stick. But how much does that affect how we actually play the game? Well, to make any progress in Poppy Playtime, you'll need to interact with a whole bunch of things. With the only part of the screen that's actually capable of that being this tiny circle in the center. In normal play, this isn't an issue since you can just turn your head. But for us with no neck, things are not quite that simple. The problems begin instantly. We want to interact with this keypad and get inside this room. We cannot do this. We're not looking in the correct direction. We cannot open this door. But that's okay. There's another door we can go through here. And that is this door. However, bad news, we also can't interact with this door. <laughs> so what do we do about that? Well, the game has very enthusiastic physics. And if you stand on a physics object, it can sometimes just spin you around. <laughs> And I didn't touch the camera, so that is definitively our character's feet moving. Which is allowed. So that's the gist of how we spin. But some important details. First, this process is not an exact science, and the distance you spin, as well as if you spin at all, is incredibly inconsistent. Second, the weight and size of a physics object directly affects how janky it is. The smaller and lighter objects, like toy parts in particular, are great at spinning us. But as objects get bigger and heavier, like these boxes, they become increasingly unhelpful. Finally, objects are only capable of spinning us on the horizontal axis. This means we still have no way of looking up or down, other than jumping and crouching. So this is going to be a lot of this run chat. It is going to be spin to win. <laughs> the perfect spin. So, we need to put in a very specific code to get through this door. Remember how I said we can't look up or down? This is where that becomes an issue. However, I've been practicing, and I think I can get this first try. Green. Pink. Yes. Yellow. And red. Yes! <laughs> yes! So, this game's major gameplay mechanic is this thing called the Grab Pack. That is a pair of extendable hands that you can shoot across the map to grab things, connect electrical circuits, and stuff like that. In order to progress now, we need to use our brand new Grab Pack on this hand panel in order to open the door to the next area. And this is our entire range of movement. But with a little bit of careful platforming. There we go. We spent half an hour on the first bit. Oh, you've seen nothing yet. It's not an easy run. Now that we're finally out of the first room of the game, let's go over what chapter one has in store for us going forward so that we can keep track of our overall progress through the game. Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 is made up of roughly six rooms or sections, which takes us from the Welcome Center of the Playtime Co. Toy Factory 
all the way down to its most hidden depths, where we awaken this haunted doll and roll credits. The game is pretty short, honestly, and we've already completed the first section of six. But now that we're in the Huggy Wuggy display room, things are going to start to ramp up quite a bit. Now, we once again need to turn about 90 degrees to one side. Whoa! -ho -ho. Okay. So we want to hit this hand panel up here. Luckily, the devs gave us a nice little stairway. It's almost like this is how the game was meant to be played. However, that has now blown a fuse, and we now need to turn the power back on. And the key to that room is in Huggy Wuggy's hand, which is extremely high up. Another bad thing about this, it always destroys the staircase that the devs pre-built. That means that when we have to press that again in the future, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. That is, unless we use a very special box. If anyone in here is a Freddy scholar, then you're probably familiar with this box. A Freddy is an item that breaks a game, and this box doesn't know what gravity is. You can just pull it through the air like this. I'm probably going to use this as a staircase. But anyway, this is all a problem for later. For now, let's worry about that key. My personal favorite way to do this is to get the yellow thing here. That seems fine. Then this red pillar and be very careful that it doesn't fall over because this is the perfect height to get that key. <gasps> that was close. That was close. And get the key, please. There it is. Now, the next place we need to go is this door and we are once again looking entirely the wrong direction. Okay, I think I have just kicked that out of bounds. Okay, I'm gonna stand on this child's head. Oh no! Can we please get a spin? Hmm, is this enough actually? Okay, we're in the power room. So this room is a puzzle. We need to connect a power outlet to this box here using our grab pack arms. The power outlet, however, is entirely behind us, as everything is. Okay, so let's do the puzzle. This is very, very simple. You do not need to move your head at all to do this puzzle. All you need to do is that. Now we've restored power to the outside. We need to press this hand button once again. So let's real quickly spin ourselves. Let's see if I can get a good spin off this broom. Here it comes. Beep, beep, beep. We're going. <laughs> no, no, don't go the other way. Oh my God, it can't make up its mind. Don't make me go to the other broom. Don't make me go to your brother, fine. Bye bye, Bobby. Bye bye, Bertie. Who's your favorite Poppy Playtime character? Well, I like the Broom Brothers. Why aren't they in chapter two? Oh, that is perfect. And on the box and press the button. Love to see it. It's always good to get the help of a legacy Freddy. And I am so glad that he was able to help in this challenge run, but we've got places to be. Now that we're facing the correct way to open the door out, we are officially done with the Huggy Wuggy room and can move right along to the third section and most complicated challenge yet. So this is the room where we get our second hand. But in order to get access to it, we need to put four fuses in this machine. Three of the fuses randomly change locations every time you reload checkpoints, so they could be anywhere. However, the blue fuse is always in the same place, which is right up here on the floor. But crouching cannot get you low enough to pick up this fuse. That's a big problem. I spent so long trying to stack boxes to get high enough to pick up the blue fuse. And then Tronmo saw the footage and he said, why don't you just walk backwards and grab it as you're falling? Yeah. 
That is the technique. Use one of four. Collected. So I'm gonna level with you, chat. There are certain fuses that, as far as I know, are impossible to pick up. This is one of them. This is one of them. So we need to just keep re-rolling and hoping a favorable seed happens. I'm not feeling good about this seed either. Nope, there's this one underneath the conveyor belt again. This one is possible. We're gonna try and do this seed. First things first, I wanna get this one. There is no way to pick up users that are on the ground because they're too low. However, I managed to find a glitch question mark. If you do this with a box and it is now resting on top of the fuse, the game wants to grab onto the box but slips and accidentally grabs the fuse. This is something I found by accident and I was flabbergasted. <laughs> Next, we want this stack of boxes to get that fuse there. Please, game, please. <laughs> please. I really want that box stack to stay stacked. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Now we want to demolish the stack because the final fuse, these are just gonna get in the way. I will say, I have literally never gotten this fuse before. It's the first time for everything. Game, don't tease me like that. Don't have my fingertips caressing the fuse like that. Oh my God. Just pick up the fuse. <laughs> Please, God. Start a prediction. Will I get the final fuse in the next five minutes? Nope. Can I get it in the next four minutes? You've made your choice, chat. Can I get the fuse in four minutes? Let's go, go, go. Come on. Come on, fuse. Give me the fuse. <gasps> I'm giving the fuse a little tickle. How much longer have we got? How much longer on the timer? 60 seconds? I feel like I can do it. No, box, don't escape. Now is not the time to escape. It ended? I'm so sorry, believers. Watch it now, just pick up the fuse immediately. Oh my God. <laughs> it's rigged. I should have done five minutes. All right, we've got all the fuses. Let's rotate ourselves in a way that we can access the fuse panel. Wow. <laughs> that was just a one frame camera turn. Okay, I can get these fuses in from this angle. Time to get that red hand. We finally got the two hands. I'm gonna need to rotate myself a little bit more to get through this next puzzle. Ron, I need your expertise. Ooh. Don't put me out of bounds. That's a little bit too much for my taste. Just a rotation will do. These two hand panels are lovely because there's no fancy platforming we need to do. We can just do a little tiny jump. And now we move on to this section, which is a puzzle. Dun, dun, dun. Now the way the game wants you to complete this puzzle is to fire down to the power and then roll back, connect that pylon and then put the electricity here. There is a big problem with this though. We cannot get low enough to hit that. If we decide that what we will do is we will connect the electricity here and then just go up, we can't. This room has a bunch of rollers that stop us getting up them. So this is another part that is impossible without camera movement. Well, it's impossible without glitches because it turns out that if you reload checkpoint, the rollers just don't work. And now we can complete the puzzle. <laughs> they did patch it. This section is why I'm not doing it on current patch. Okay, we have finally made it to the make a friend room. So we wanna turn this machine on. However, as it says in like aerial font, it needs power. 
and the place where we turn the power back on is in the rafters above us. So all we've got to do is go up here and go round to where the puzzle is. Uh oh, there's a bridge that needs us to pull it and extend it. What we can do, however, is reload checkpoint again. And it actually leaves us looking in exactly the right direction. So the crisis has been averted for now. Um, where is my hand? Let's try and reload checkpoint again. I would like to be able to play with hands. I'm starting to think, chat, that maybe the game wasn't meant to be played this way. <laughs> Thank God. Back to our regularly scheduled challenge run. The bridge is also too low to grab. However, we've done this song and dance before. Got it. So now that bridge has been extended, we can actually progress to the puzzle. This puzzle works very similarly to all the other electricity puzzles. We need to connect our hand to the power output and we need to take it to this power input. However, our arm is not long enough because of this ding dang pole. Now the game wants us to extend this bridge here to make a shortcut. However, this is comically easy to skip. We just jump around the pole. There we go. We've now connected the power to downstairs. Now everything starts to fall apart. We cannot press this button to start the machine. So we have to rotate ourselves. And another weird thing, this is the one room of the game with no toy parts. Why is the toy part factory the part of the game without toy parts or toys? So we can't use that to turn us around. Now, this room does have small boxes, and small boxes, they can rotate us, but it is nowhere near as consistent as the toys. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Why don't we pick up some really good items earlier in the run and bring it here? We can't do that because several points require us to reset checkpoint. And if we do that, then the items will disappear. <gasps> God bless you, box. Not only is it very unlikely that that will happen, but it is very unlikely that that will happen and that it will spin us in the right direction. That has never happened in practice before. Okay, now we just gotta pull these levers and we can make a cat bee of our very own. It's a perfect cat bee. Shame you need to face backwards now. Let us have the moment. But sadly, the chat member was correct. The very next thing we need to do is put our new cat bee in the toy receptacle directly behind us. Time for some more spinning. Let's try. Let's start our attempts. Okay, is that the strat? It might be I kick the box and then jump on the box. Kickboxing. Okay, bit by bit, we're rotating more. No! <laughs> if that was the other way, that would have been perfect. Rotate left, it will be faster. I need to express to you how little control I have over these physics. I don't choose which direction I rotate in. The box likes left more than right. You tell it to the box. Oh, benevolent box, please. <laughs> Nothing but disdain in its eyes. Okay. God, we're so close. Can someone put in a good word for me with the box? <gasps> put the cat bee in. We did it! I'm a box lover and I always have been. I'm just playing hard to get, okay? Let's get scared by Huggy. With Cat B in the machine and the checkpoint reached, we are now in the final section of the game. In normal play, this finale sees us getting chased by Huggy Wuggy himself. And after a quick jog through the facility's vents, we slide our way to freedom before yanking down a big yellow box to give Huggy Wuggy a Connie cushion. Then we take a short walk to this suspicious door, free the haunted doll within, and the game is complete. 
this whole section only takes a few minutes in casual play. But given the remaining runtime of this video, you can probably guess, things get a lot more complicated when some troublemaker has vetoed our vertebrae. So now this is where we start, and we're looking right at Huggy Wuggy. This does mean we will need to do the chase backwards, but we've got bigger fish to fry. I have been practicing this, so I should be able to do this chase backwards without much issue. And now I think pretty soon I'm gonna have to go, yep, to left, back, left. And now we go down this slide. Oh, here he comes. Here comes the boy. And now all we've got to do is pull down this box. All we've got to do is pull pull down the, the box. And all we've got to do is... This is what I need help with chat. It is brainstorming time. Take the box with you. There will be no way to drag a box, no matter how tiny it is, through this section. Try to look up in this room before the chase. That would be a good idea. However, I do not know of any way to get our character to look up. I would be fine with not killing Huggy, but then we would need to find a way to not kill Huggy. What about using a cheat engine? Well, that would be cheating. That's the issue with that idea. So this all seems pretty dire and like the run might actually be dead for real this time. But believe it or not, it is actually far worse than even that. Let's just pretend we find a way to pull that box. We've basically just got to navigate our way around these catwalks. And we go down the stairs and we're once again stuck. Behind us is the door to Poppy's area. That needs us to be looking the exact opposite direction. The only item that is in this entire area is the cassette tape that is right next to my blue thumb here. However, this cannot spin us. It doesn't have physics. And I'm pretty sure there are no other items in this entire area. So even though the entire game is doable necklace, at the very end, there are two points that make it impossible. Unless Astral Spiff's idea works. And that is that we do the chase forwards and grab the box as we're coming down. And then we can pull it to crush Huggy. The bonus of that is that we're now facing the correct way for the poppy door. But there is an issue with Astral Spiff's strategy. We're gonna try and pull that box down. Did you miss it? I tried this off stream for hours, trying to grab that box, and I never got it once. Imagine it takes us 15 minutes to angle ourselves to do that. Awful. It might be literally impossible. Or at least if it is possible, it is literally a one frame window. So with that strategy potentially out of human skill level, the stream ended with no further progress. As days passed and my offline experimentation continued, things were looking increasingly hopeless. I did discover that some jank when bonking Huggy can turn you a little bit, but it was nowhere near enough. So with both of our run-killing hurdles deemed insurmountable, the run was officially over. Unless some kind of genius appeared and just handed me the answer to all my problems. But I mean, what are the chances of that happening? That's right, a full week after the first stream, not only one genius appeared, but two. With each of them gifting me one new strat that, when combined, may actually be able to complete the run. 
But before we get to that, hold that excitement for one second, because... First thing we need to do, we're going to just rub ourselves on boxes and hope that we get a good angle. And the way I know how much that is, is by looking at this poster. If the poster ends between these two fingers, that is the camera angle we want. Oh yeah, this is going to YouTube. But let me tell you, this part probably isn't gonna be a YouTube video because no one wants to watch 40 minutes of me rubbing against a box. Well, other than you people. Only very smart people want to see that. Oh, okay. That's at least in the correct direction. Just a little bit more box. A crumb more angle. Ooh, that looks good actually. <gasps> That's a perfect angle. Chat, it is not free. Now I've got to do the huggy chase at the most awkward angle you've ever seen in your life. And if you're wondering why we're turning this much, it's because we want to be looking at the poppy door as much as possible. But any angles more turned than this, you start to not be able to get the huggy box. We are at the box. Now is the first of the strats from the speedrunners. This is called the mushy grab. When you jump at low frame rates, your hands will go way higher. So, big reveal, there's my frame rate. Currently running at 60 frames per second. We're gonna crank that all the way down to five. This is how real gamers play. If we mess it up, because it is very easy to mess up at five frames per second, it is back to the box. So, wish me luck. We've got the box. The next trick, when I was showing you that the bridge collapse can turn your character, it only turned about 25 to 30 degrees. Another speedrunner called Nia discovered if your video settings are set in a certain way, the bridge collapse collapses you in one single frame. And something about the turning that the bridge collapse would usually do is amplified when it snaps you down in a single frame. This strat is called the Nia Corkscrew. And I really hope it works. Okay, I want to be stood about here, and go. Is that gonna be enough? I don't know, chat. Let's go to the door and find out. Can we complete the run, please? <laughs> please, 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 please. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> My circle is barely over the door texture. Is this gonna open the door? If not, I'm gonna do crouching to try and open the door on the handle. <laughs> Is this enough? Yes! Incredible! Turn around, it says. Well, I'm afraid if there's one thing I can't do, it's turn around. We're finishing this game without moving our head once. And that is Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 beaten without moving my neck. You opened my case. I sure did. That couldn't have been closer. My god. <laughs> Big thanks to Mushy Meow and Nia for the help with those two strats. And you know what we've got to do now, right? Shall we just look at Chapter 2? and just see what is going on in chapter two. Hello, sorry to interrupt. Chapter two will have to wait for another time. Sorry, but if you can't wait and want to see my first attempts early, you can do exactly that by heading to my Twitch page here. Or if you'd like to stick around on the YouTube and just wait for the video, you can do that too by subscribing here instead. Well, with all that said, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, also, buy the plush, I forgot.